Hello and welcome to our budget edition of The Drum. I'm Steve Kinane. So just how tough is Wayne Swan's budget likely to be? Will the government deliver on mental health reform? And are set-top boxes really the new pink bats? Our panel tonight, former Liberal MP Ross Cameron, Miriam Lyons from the Centre for Policy Development and Marius Benson, National Political Editor for ABC News Radio. Well, in just over an hour, the Gillard government will deliver its first budget. Cre creating jobs and cutting spending are the Treasurer's focus as he delivers a deficit that's predicted to be around $50 billion. The Treasurer says the budget will be tough but fair. Tonight's budget is based on economic responsibility, it's focused on jobs and it's focused on spreading opportunity. Spreading opportunity to every postcode in this country. We're forecasting 500,000 more jobs in the next couple of years. And of course, we have to ensure that we spread the opportunity that comes from the boom right around our country. We have to make sure we can give everybody the skills and the opportunity to participate so they can benefit from the boom. But Shadow Treasurer Joe Hockey says the commodities boom won't last and when it stops, the budget will come down like a house of cards. This is a government that needs to deliver tonight believable figures. They need to show the Australian people that they really are prepared to make hard decisions that affect their own political position and do not make the financial position of Australians worse or harder. This is a government that needs to show it can manage the best terms of trade in Australia's living memory. They need to show that everyone can gain from the prosperity of the nation, not just a few. The government needs tonight to tell the truth about its plan to get back to surplus. So, Marius, an hour and a half away from Wayne Swan's fourth budget, what are your thoughts? Well, the word tough is going to be tossed around and uh, the government is going to say it's tough and the opposition has already said it's not tough, it's a phony toughness. Tomorrow they'll be saying the same thing. There's not going to be anything so dramatic announced by Wayne Swan tonight that the opposition is going to change that line of attack. It's, uh, there's going to be some patches of toughness and no more. But just pausing for a moment before we, we look at the fine detail of tonight, which is going to be announced, as you say, in an hour and a half. Just look at, look at the task ahead for the Treasure. Australia has a, a, an economy of $1.3 trillion, which uh, Ross, as an economist, will tell us. Uh, I think it puts us about 20 in the world. It's a, it's a medium-sized economy. Um, the Treasurer is dealing with the public sec sector of that, about 25% of the entire GDP, about $350, $400 billion. That doesn't change much from year to year. It's always about 25%. The, uh, the, the spending of that is already largely locked in. So the iceberg of Australia's economy is there. We're just talking about the tip tonight. Ross, is it likely to be a tough budget, the way you say it? Well, I think the first thing we say is you've got both sides of politics absolutely committed to the idea of returning the budget to surplus. So there's a sense in which we should, ought to begin by saying that the good guys, the angels, the conservatives, uh, have won the macroeconomic argument. <laughs> so you've got a choice between two sets of fiscal conservatives, and that's a good thing for Australia. Uh, now, whether this is a tough budget, um, I think one of the dissonances about this budget is that you've had, on the one hand, the language of toughness, while at the same time you've had these significant spending, new spending programs announced, like, as you say, the new pink bats, the set-top box. So uh, I think there's been $8 billion worth of new spending announced in the last month, $4 billion in the last week. Uh, it's hard for me to describe that as a really tough budget, uh, but I'm thrilled that both sides of politics are committed to return to surplus, and it's only a question of who gets there faster. Miriam, what are your thoughts on whether it's tough or not? Well, I'm, I'm interested in this definition of uh, a return to um, surplus in 2012 being the new definition of fiscal orthodoxy. I always understood that the orthodoxy was that you spent in a downturn and you ran surpluses in an upturn. Now, let's just look at the reason why the budget is in deficit. You know, we are coming off the back of a large and successful 
fiscal stimulus that has now mostly been phased out. There was the cost of responding to the massive floods. There's um, the fact that mining companies have bringing, been bringing forward a lot of investment and therefore they've been writing off uh, you know, large amounts of investment against the company tax um, receipts. So that's one of the reasons that company tax revenue has been going down. It's one of the reasons that we're not returning to surplus as fast as maybe had been expected. Um, you know, there's the residual softness of the economy in patches, as we I uh, expect you would also acknowledge the, you know, we do have a very patchwork economy right now. We've, you know, we've got the mining boom racing ahead, uh, you know, driving increased employment in some places, but we've got um, very soft retail spending. We've got consumers who are nervous. They're paying down their debts, which incidentally is probably a great thing. Uh, we, we actually, you know, got to a level of mortgage debt that was higher than the US level of mortgage debt as a proportion of GDP at the peak of the crisis. We're talking 85% of GDP. Now, the government deficit is a very, very small amount compared to the level of private debt in the economy. So that is a very uncertain situation in which to be just rushing breakneck towards a surplus again. We still know that the international recovery is, is, is looking a little bit patchy. Uh, a lot of it's about the fact that um, you know, consumers have decided to borrow again a bit uh, in the US. Now, you know, that's quite fragile in what, itself. What we, know, what we know for sure is five o'clock this afternoon we got the... Um, you know, we got the latest data from the ABS in relation to trade surplus and we found that Australia's trade surplus this month was three times that which was predicted. So we had $1.75 billion trade surplus at $500 million predicted. Mm -hmm. So we've got the Reserve Bank, who's already indicated they're looking at an up, upward movement in, uh, in, in interest rates. Regardless of what the government does, incidentally, they specifically warned that regardless well, of the sure, state of the budget they would be doing I that. I think we know. Which we're is... going to see tonight an additional new spending. I mean, the, the, the Commonwealth's estimates were the pre-budget the, the pre budget forecasts were for a $40 billion deficit. So any cent above 40 billion okay, is a further stretching and tightening, increasing of demand, forcing up, I mean, forcing the hand of the Reserve Bank. It looks like coming in at about 50. Okay, yeah, Marius, I'll take that point up with you about the $50 billion deficit, which is predicted. Yeah. Now, uh, that means in the next two years, if, if Labor really wants to get the budget back to surplus, they're going to have to find a lot of cuts over the next couple of years. And, and it's uncertain what the economy is going to do in the next Everything couple of years. Everything is uncertain. The, the, where the dollar will be is uncertain. What, this, what, uh, what the, uh, the trade figures will be is uncertain. What the commodity prices will be is uncertain. The only certainty is that in two years' time, we will be in surplus because it's not because it's an economic necessity, it's an absolute political necessity. It will kill the Labor government if they're not in surplus, so they'll be in surplus. Uh, I, I noticed that um, in Peter Brent's uh, blog today, he said Labor missed an opportunity in 2008. That was the budget they should have been tough on. Do you agree with that, Ross? That first year when you get, you've got three years ahead of you, you can make some big cuts and it pays off later. Well, that was the, I mean, the toughest budget we've had, I think, in the last 15 years was the Howard Costello budget of 96 when we first arrived, when we saw the state of play. And the guy said, this, this is the opportunity to do the architectural cuts. And I just want to make the point, I mean, I accept, really I, I, I accept Miriam's cuts, argument, though. I accept Miriam's argument that, uh, you know, circumstances ebb and flow, and we'll hear a huge amount of talk from Wayne Swan tonight about the GFC, which was certainly not an Australian financial crisis. It might have been a North European and a North American, it wasn't, we, I, we didn't even go into def, it, 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 we didn't even go into recession. But there'll be a huge amount of talk about it, and there'll be lots and lots of talk about the impact of the floods and the natural disasters. Uh, but... What you saw in the Howard Costello period was that at the end of the time in government of the coalition, there was not one red cent, not a zack, not a razoo of Commonwealth debt. There and was that massive meant, infrastructure debt. That meant however. that when the GFC arrived, uh, Kevin Rudd was in this magnificently luxurious position to be able to just splash the cash as much as he wanted to and to look like a sort of a great economic manager. Now, all I say is when we get into these strong times where we've got a strong dollar, we've got exports booming, we've got a commodity boom going on, that's the time when you've got to make the hard decisions. And the idea of spending $300 million on set-top boxes at 400 bucks a shot when a set-top box costs 40 bucks. Okay. Me does not look like fiscally prudent or a tough we'll, budget. We'll get a bit more into that in a little bit later, Miriam. A quick response to, from you there? Look, I, I 
I was very interested to hear Joe Hockey talking about the fact that the commodity boom won't last forever. I think he's right, but I wonder in that context why we had so many tax cuts at the height of the commodities boom in the Howard government, why we had the introduction or extension of uncapped tax expenditures. So things that are most likely to put the budget into structural deficit over the long term, why we had the opposition to the resource super profits tax. If we don't think this is going to go forever, why not actually spread that wealth around a little bit further, um, yet more for you know the general Australian public who actually own those resources. Well, I don't think our side of, of politics apologises for the fact that we are attracted to tax cuts. We think people actually pay too much tax. I know that's not a universally shared view, uh, but uh, the, the does that lead though to a structural deficit in the budget? Well, I think what it leads to is much more discipline in spending. I mean, you can't afford just to... That the response of Labor to each of the major... If we've got a problem with... You know, we have a problem with global warming, the response to that is a new tax. Uh, we've got a, uh, you know, we've got a commodities boom taking place. The response to that is a new tax. Uh, we've got, we've, hand, got a, got we've got a flood in Queensland. The response to that is a new tax. There is this belief that government can solve every problem by introducing a new tax, creating a new bureaucracy, and creating new spending. Okay, programs. let's move on and talk about some of the things that are going to be announced uh, tonight. And we we already know much of what's in the budget. The various drip feeds of information from the government have made sure of that. And one of the big uh, announcements will be about mental health. The treasurer is due to under unveil a package worth $2.2 billion over four years and it will include money prevention and direct care for patients and the establishment of a mental health commission as well. John Mendoza, the former mental health advisor to the federal government who resigned in frustration last year, says it's about time. It does uh, certainly uh, cause for some celebration that the government has uh, responded to widespread and continuing uh, critique of its response in this area. It's taken four budgets, it would seem. Uh, for the Rudd-Gillard governments to respond to uh, you know, the universal calls for investment in mental health. What I remain to, uh, interested in, I guess, for tonight is will the money flow from next financial year uh, evenly over the forward estimates, the four years, um, and will it be good quality investment? Marius, this is a policy shift by the government. The mental health sector said previously that they, they didn't feel like they were being listened to. It seems like they, they might have a win tonight in the budget. Yeah, and they are cheering already. I was talking to Ian Hickey, one of the leading figures in mental health, and he was, he was welcoming all of this. He was saying, you know, the more money you get, the better, but $2 billion, which is what we're talking about uh, in the budget tonight in all likelihood, is a very good result. And then I was speaking to uh, Matthias Cormann, who was putting the opposition case, and I said $2 billion.